Ladies and gentlemen, can you believe it? We are back. My name is Brandon Davis. I am the founder of the Rags to Riches community, 192 members strong. This is a non-paid group. Our mission in this group is to help others not do dumb things and also find a way to give back to the world. Uh, maybe at one point, at some point in time, I'll have enough views on YouTube to make a little money out of this, but I don't expect that ever to happen. So in the meantime, we're going to have fun. So um, if you guys uh, follow me at all, my last video I did, Pulse Chain Price Prediction, did pretty well. We had 10,000 views. I tried to break down as much as possible kind of what Pulse would look like when it launches initially within the first three to six months. So if you haven't checked that out, go ahead and check that out. That's going to give you the... Um, give you the background story to what I'm about to talk about now. And again, it, this is the uh, Rags to Riches uh, community. Find us on YouTube, find us in Telegram here. So let's let's get started, all right? So this is Pulse Chain Price Prediction Part 2. I don't even know. This is August 13th, Friday the 13th. Fun, fun, fun. So we're going to kind of go through some thoughts. This is going to be quick, um, and I'm going to gonna try to um, address some of your concerns. Done a little bit of research and, and I've kind of found out what the primary concerns are with Pulse, what, what the internet's saying, what Reddit's saying, what YouTube's saying, all that. So let's talk about that. Um, so we're going to do everything we can to answer those. I hope you guys really like these awesome memes that I found all over the internet. So here, I really like the Forrest Gump one here. All right. Uh, and before we get started, this is very important too. Um, I, I don't, I didn't know much about NFTs uh, before this week, so I kind of made it my mission to kind of figure it out. So what we're gonna do? I've got a rags to riches NFT. We got 200 members in there. I did a poll. Quite a few people said that they would bid on one of these NFTs. All you need to bid on this NFT is uh, a MetaMask wallet. Just go to MetaMask.io and download that and some ethereum in your wallet and you can go to openc.io i'll show you guys that in a minute but anyway uh you know to kind of coincide with our mission to make the world a better place i'm going to donate 100 percent of these proceeds to uh, the roanoke rescue mission they don't know it yet but they will and you guys will because you're going to get pictures and things like that about it so if you have any questions about where I'm donating, here's the website. Um, and for the sake of transparency, I will show you the address that uh, the NFT, uh, the proceeds from the NFT will go to. And then I will show you the uh, the check that we're gonna be donating um, to this organization. And we, you know, we wanna use our platform and group to make the world a better place. And, and I really did struggle with this initially when we only had two or three members said, you know, what's, what am I trying to do here? Am I, am I going to try to make money off this? What am I going to do? I said, you know what? Um, let's just do good for the world as much as possible. And I'm going to be very, very transparent with you because I know there are a lot of bad actors out there um, that say one thing and do the other. So I will make sure I'm very transparent. Uh, and you can uh, click the link to bid on our NFT um, the auction will end in one week. It started just before I posted this. Uh, and hopefully, you know, if our group makes it big, we get like 50,000, 100,000 members here in the next five years or a hundred years, <laughs> who knows? Maybe that NFT might be worth something to somebody one day. So without further ado, here is our gangsta NFT. Rags to riches. Here it is right here. Okay. So we've got our 50, 25, 25 portfolio strategy. If you've been in the group long enough, you know what I'm talking about here. We have a possible 1970 something Chevy Caprice lifted and bouncing. And then uh, our HODL license plate. Again, if you're in our group, there's like an inside joke here and it has something to do with me. So uh, this is it. I hope you guys will bid on this for the sake of helping some folks out, uh, rescuemission.net, um, and you can bid anything. I think the opening bid started at $33 just based on um, some gas fees and things like that, 
but opening bid 33 bucks and you can go up from there, okay? So let us get started here. Um, what can the price of Pulse Chain do? This was from Richard Hart about five or six days ago, I believe. Um, and, and I'll kind of summarize here just in case the, the sound doesn't play. I'm not quite sure if it will. It should. Let me see if it's playing in my headphones here. Price expectation for Pulse. Okay. I don't make forward-looking price statements, but I will tell you what's possible. I will tell you what's possible. When I possible. said that Hex was designed to do a 10,000X when it was invented, it was because I just looked at what Ethereum did. So he says, uh, you know, he says what's possible with, with Pulse. Well, if Ethereum can do a 10,000X, Pulse can do a 10,000X. And he talks about that over the next you know, couple minutes here. You can check it out at this link, Hex Clips, fantastic, fantastic um, uh, YouTube channel. Check it out. But if he thinks that Ethereum can do a 10,000x, uh, that means that he also thinks Pulse can do a 10,000x, which is what he said was possible. So what would it take for Pulse to do a 10,000x? That's the question of the day. Okay, folks, so um, if you watch my last video, my last price prediction was 0 0.00069. Based on what Richard said, based on him saying, well, Ethereum did a 10,000x, uh, why is that not possible for Pulse? It kind of seems like 0 0.00069 it's going to be very, very difficult to attain a 10,000x. I think that's like 69 cents. Let me do the math real quick. But I'm pretty sure that's what we got. So if we got 0 0.00069. Yeah. Oh, wait. Yeah, that's $6.90. That's uh, in complete insanity. What would be more reasonable, right? Like what what could we see that might be a little bit more reasonable? Point zero 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 one times ten thousand. Got ten cents, right? If he thinks that it's possible, then point zero 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 one is much more reasonable, right? Much, much more reasonable. Ten cents. But the question becomes, and I think actually I'm missing one zero on my last price prediction. But the question becomes, you know, if if we are in this type of range initially and we do a 10,000x, what type of tricks does he have up our sleeve, uh, up his sleeve? Additional burnt supply, staking options with paid out inflation. What, what could we see here? Um, it just seems like if 10,000x is possible, in his mind, he has to know that the supply, actually the price has to be low enough to support a 10,000x run. But let's move on to something else too. And I wanted to address this. This is one of the primary reasons, okay, that I made this video. The $14 billion sacrifice is a holdup for a lot of folks. So what do I mean $14 billion sacrifice? Well, in order to get Pulse tokens pre-launch, you had to sacrifice, and I say sacrifice because that's the term that was used, um, you had to give up your cryptocurrency to an address in order to get about 10,000 points per dollar. Uh, points is understood possibly to, to, to mean Pulse. So for every dollar of crypto that you sacrificed, you get 10,000 Pulse coins, okay? So this went on for, I don't know, a period of what, two or three weeks? I, I can look it up. I don't remember off the top of my head. But, you know, on the, the last day or the last couple days, um, we had gotten up to a sacrifice amount of about 600 or 700 billion. I think it was about 650 billion. Uh, or billion, not billion. I meant million. $650 million. Um, and then it kind of shot up a little bit more. But the last day or so, the origin address of Hex, okay, so Hex is not Pulse, the origin address of Hex, sacrificed $14 billion worth of Hex. 
Okay, so what does that mean? That means that $14 billion worth of hex, that means that they got a massive amount of supply of pulse. And there's a lot of people freaking out about that because it's assumed that the person who owns the origin address of hex is uh, Richard Hart or his silent investors, a combination of both, whatever the case may be. So that means that he would own 90%, um, right around 90% of the total supply of Pulse when it launches. And now remember, Pulse is going to launch with all the supply. You're not going to have any more that's released. It's deflationary. So a lot of people say, wow, you got one wallet that holds 90%. And that, that frightens a whole lot of people. So I kind of did some research. I talked to some folks. We wanted to know the reasons. What are the arguments out there for people who are pro, pro Pulse, pro Richard Hart and all that? Why? So one of the reasons, 33 validators would be unable to take over the network. So when Pulse launches, we're going to have 33 validators. These are the folks that, you know, that, that help the proof of state network run properly. Uh, if these validators teamed up, they could potentially do things to take over the network. So one of the reasons why the founder or the owner of Pulse would want such a high supply is to make sure that there couldn't be some sort of mutiny or dark arts or foul play at work here. Another reason, sacrificing 14 billion, you know, also could help pump the price of hex. So if that hex is never sold, that $14 billion worth of hex, it can really help hold up the price and pump the price of hex. Okay. So that's an added benefit for hex holders. Um, another thing that people brought up price performs best when liquidity is lowest. So when li liquidity is lowest, you had Satoshi Nakamoto had the most supply, very, very centralized Bitcoin centralized at that time. That's when, you know, the, those, those years of infancy, when the network was growing and growing, that's when it grew, grew the most. It's where it grew the most. It's where it grew the most. You had the highest ROI in the beginning. It doesn't matter really what coin you're talking about. A lot of those coins back in the day, the same thing. So price performs best when liquidity is lowest and also supply is centralized. It's very important to know. And it, that's not just... Um, that's not just talking about crypto. That's talking about stocks. It's talking about companies, all, all sorts of things. Okay. Reduced volatility. If big addresses aren't dumping as much. So if you had a total sacrificed amount of a hundred billion, okay. Or 1 billion, sorry. And you had one person who owned 500 million of that. Okay, and they, and they weren't one of the people that were responsible for the project. Don't you think that it would really suck for price if on the first day they 10x'd um, and you saw the huge green candle hit like you always see the first day at 10x's and then they dump price and it just goes to shit for the next month or two or three? You know, that really takes the, the wind out of a lot of people's sails when they see that. So instead, you get somebody who has like a, maybe let's say like a reasonable, I think there was a $30 million um, sacrifice. That person who sacrificed $30 million, he's going to get $30 million times 10000 potentially, or whatever it was in the bonding curve at that time. So he's going to have a whole lot of pulse at launch. When the origin address of Hex sacrificed $14 billion, that effectively made that person who sacrificed $30 million just a small little guppy in the pond. And as long as the origin address is not dumping, which if you look at Hex and Big Payday and how all that worked, diluting things right before, um, right before a launch disincentivizes people to sell right away. Because instead of a 10X, they only gonna get a 2X. Instead of a 10X, they only get a 1X. So they're gonna hold, they're gonna hold longer. Price won't dump as much. You're, you're, you're diluting the supply. You're increasing the supply. All right. So this was another argument. Are there any supply reasons tied up in potential Richard Hart exchange plans? He's mentioned that he's you know, talking about an exchange. Maybe that's not necessarily an exchange. Maybe that's an ETH on-ramp or uh, you know, a bridge from the ETH network to Pulse. 
and he just has to go through the rigmarole of the, you know, securities exchange, you know, regulations, all that type of stuff. Uh, so that's a potential. How does that tie into it? How does the total supply tie into that? Uh, wouldn't Richard Hart want hexagons to be the primary holders? He's already conditioned them to hold. Every hexagon address is a proxy of himself. So he's copied himself with a lot of raving fans, just like I talked about last video. So he, he would want to incentivize hexagons to be the folks who control this network initially, the foundations, the cornerstones, right? So here's just some of the, the things. Now, I wanted to talk about one last thing. This is not abnormal in terms of what Richard Hart and whoever he works with, what they've done in the past. Uh, in the Hex ecosystem, Big Payday was basically a day where a, a shit ton of um, inflation was divvied out to holders. And there was a huge pump right before. And everybody kind of knew that supply... Uh, supply was going up, 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 and it was going to dump as soon as big payday hit, right? So what happened um, right before big payday? You had to be staked to get a huge amount. So what happened right before big payday? Uh, an address came in and staked and gobbled up like 98% of the stakes, which effectively also gobbled up a massive amount of the inflation paid out to those stakers on big payday, which subsequently caused the dump to be much, much, much less. So the equivalent of big payday in the pulse ecosystem would be sacrificing 14 billion on the last day, dilute the supply, make the big fish turn into the small fish. So that way, if they do want to dump, it's not going to dump destroy the price. So th this whole, everything that I'm going over lends itself to wh whoever, whoever has that massive supply of hex, massive supply of pulse are probably going to be pretty benevolent. All right. They're probably going to be benevolent. They want the project to do well. Or, or could they scam everybody? Sure. Am I invested in this project? Yes. I have not invested more than I'm okay with losing. It wouldn't make me, it wouldn't make me happy, but I'm not going to jump off a bridge if I get rug pulled. And I, I hate to say it, but I don't think we are. You know, I don't think hex skins are going to get rug pulled. All the code is there. Everything is public. You can see everything, regardless of Richard Hart or how you feel about him. You can audit the code. You can see. You can see what it does. There's no back doors. There's no hidden rooms with the code. It's going to operate the same way every single time. It's immutable. And the same thing's going to be with Pulse. So I hope that I've talked to some of you out there who are really worried about this 14 billion sacrifice. And I hope I've kind of talked to you about some arguments and some reasons why it would be other than just some dude's greedy and he wants to dump price on everybody. It's a scam and a rug pull. That's what a lot of people want you to think. Um, and, and a lot of times, a lot of people want you to think that so they can buy your shit up. So you got to be careful. All right. They want to scare you out of this. So there's more for them. So the last thing I want to give a big shout out to uh, Twitter.com slash Identity Block. He's an OG Hexkin and he answered a whole lot of questions about things that I didn't know the answers to during my research phase for this small video. Guys, uh, make sure that if you're feeling if you're feeling charitable and you want to help these people out, and like I said, you can trust me or you don't have to trust me, but I'm really going to try to do some good with the group that I have in a big way. Uh, you know, bid on that NFT. Bid just a little bit. Drive the price up. Every dollar counts. Doesn't matter if we give them 50 bucks. That's going to help buy food and supplies for somebody or we give them $5,000. It doesn't matter. Um, just help out if you can. And it would make me so happy to be able to deliver a check, um, to these folks, uh, for the amount of good that they do for our community and, and, and the people that are struggling in our community and just need our help. So again, thank you so much. Check out my previous video, check us out in telegram. It's not a paid group. I'm not trying to get money off y'all. Thank you so much for watching and have a great weekend.